Parallel routes are an advanced routing feature in Next.js. Today, I'll use a simple example to explain them quickly and clearly. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today, I'll help you understand Next.js parallel routes. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Let's start today by looking at what parallel routes allow you to accomplish in Next.js. You can see the docs right here and it says parallel routes allow you to simultaneously or conditionally render one or more pages within the same layout. And they give a nice example of a dashboard here below. So we see this image and you can see the file tree here that we're going to go over and the layout and how they're highlighting there are two separate pages being rendered inside of a parent page. So let's look at how this actually works in an example here. And you can see I've got localhost 3000, then I'm on my dashboard segment. Now I'm going to refresh the page and I've built a delay into each one of these components. These are separate pages as well. So they'll load at different times, which simulates getting data from different sources because that data can always load faster or slower than the other source. So let's go ahead and refresh. You can see they're both loading, analytics finishes first, and then team finishes after that. Let's look at how this works in VS Code. I've got VS Code open and I've already started a Next.js project and we're going to review this code with the simple example I've provided. Now inside of the dashboard route, we have a page.tsx, but notice I'm just returning null. I'm not really using the page for anything because what I'm going to provide are slots. And you can see I've got an at team slot here. That symbol is what I'd call the at symbol. And after that, I've also got an at analytics. Let me see if I can pull this over so you can just see the full word on both of those. These are considered slots for parallel routes. Now, after that, let's note that I've got a header component here that I'm going to use in my layout as well. And we'll look at that layout in just a second. But first, let me open up this team slot. And you can see inside of it, it's got its own page.tsx file. It's also got its own loading and error files and it has a nested folder called settings. Now, when we were looking at that dashboard, if I go back to that example here in the browser, you can see I'm just looking at the dashboard here. I don't have another part of my route segment that says team or analytics because those slots do not show up in the URL. So we don't see those when we navigate. But if I go to settings, as we saw that settings directory inside of my team slot, if I go there, it loads the settings for team and it keeps the state of the analytics component over here. So that is a partial render. It renders the team settings while remembering to leave the state of the analytics page alone. And from there, I can go back to the dashboard home. Now it loads the team once again, uh, once again, a partial render because it already had the analytics rendered. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration. And now back to the video. Back in VS Code, now that we've seen how the loading states work and they use the simple loading pages, just like we've used in Next.js in the past, you can have a suspense boundary and that's essentially triggers the loading page here when you use suspense. So we're not putting suspense in our code like we typically would in React. Next.js identifies that and uses a loading page if we provide one. And it does the same thing with an error page. So let's go into our team page and I will uncomment this error. You can see I'm having it wait three seconds here for a pause just so it simulates loading. But after that three seconds, it's going to throw an error, which should use our error boundary. And we have this error.tsx over here, which will let us provide a custom error page for our team slot inside of our dashboard. So I'm going to save this change now and let's go back to our page in the browser. And here's the error already, but you can see it happen again if I refresh and it loads for three seconds. 
Then it's going to throw that error. And there's our custom team error where it says data not available. Okay, back in VS Code once again, I'm going to comment out that error just so we see the loading states, but afterwards we see the content we expect to get. But now let's also talk about the default pages. So you see this default here that I have here at the top level, the same level as my layout. And here is the default. So let's talk about layout along with default. See, I'm importing the header. After that, each one of these slots has to come into the layout, just like the children that you typically see in a layout. So now we have children, team, and analytics, and they are all React nodes. So we have react.reactNode as the type. I'm using TypeScript. And underneath that, then we need to render them as well. So you can see I'm rendering the header. I'm rendering children, which is essentially where my page for the dashboard is. And remember, my page just has null. But after that, then we have the team and analytics components, those separate slots that we defined up here with the at symbol in these folders. And they're rendered as well in the layout. So that's important. So why do we provide the defaults? Well, for example, we have settings here for teams. So team has a separate page to render some team settings. And we could throw an error here too that would say settings not available, but we already did that. So you know how that works. But I would say, note that I don't have an error or loading inside of the settings directory. And since that is not there, it will go up to the next directory, the parent directory to see if a loading or error page is there, which they are. So this error would use the error file that is in the team slot above the settings folder, actually on the same level as the settings folder right here. So an error would be thrown and the error boundary here inside of the team slot would grab that error from settings. Okay, back to the default now. We must have a default here at the parent level for the children. Each one of those React nodes that we saw in the layout, each one of these, children, team, and analytics, should have a default if we think it could not be found, essentially a 404. So we need to have a default for the children just in case there's a 404. And instead, then the default will render instead of a 404. Here you can see it's much like the page TSX, I'm just returning null. And I don't have a default inside of the settings, but I'm not worried about that. It's analytics that I'm worried about. Analytics doesn't have a settings directory. So if I were to navigate to settings, we need to have a default here for analytics. And notice I've got default analytics here. I'll wrap this down. It's also got a purple background. So we'll be able to tell it's the default analytics instead of the typical page that we were loading with analytics. So now let's go back to the browser and look at the difference between soft and hard navigation and what happens to our page or our default page when we use soft or hard navigation. Okay, I'm back in the browser. I'm going to refresh once again because we don't have an error any longer. We're just loading both team and analytics. Now, if I use soft navigation, which is using a link, I'll just go to settings, and we did this earlier, you can see it loads the team settings and it's a partial render. It does not re-render the analytics. It maintains that state. However, a hard navigation like a refresh is something that happens and an app cannot maintain state. So when it cannot maintain state, it needs that default file to fall back on. So let me do a hard refresh. And now you can see we instantly got the default analytics page here or very quickly. And then after three seconds, we got the team's settings. So that's when we once again went to dashboard slash settings. But instead of that soft navigation, now we needed to re-render analytics and it needed that default page. But we also needed the default page in the parent directory for the dashboard because we also have children being passed down. And if we don't have a default there as well, we'll also get a 404. So when I go back here, I'll reload both of these. Now I'm going to go back to VS Code and quickly just get rid of one of these defaults. So I'll go to the dashboard first here, not analytics, not team. I am in the dashboard. I'll go to this default and it's very simple. I'm just going to select everything, copy that, and then I'm going to delete this page. So we no longer have it. And now our app will still run without it, but we'll have a problem on that hard refresh. 
The soft navigation still loads the team settings and does not render analytics, and it doesn't need to re-render the children either, although we don't see that, and although we're just returning null in our page. But if I do a hard navigation, we'll now have a 404, and that's because we don't have that default in the dashboard directory. And we would have the same result if we didn't have a default inside of the analytics slot, because it doesn't have the settings directory either, and we've navigated to dashboard settings. So we need default in both the dashboard directory and in the analytics slot. And if we had some other directory we were navigating to for analytics that the team didn't have, it would also need a default page to fall back on. Let me go back to VS Code and put this default page back in here so I can leave it in the source code after this tutorial. I'll just create the new page again. Default.tsx. Paste the simple code in. And you can see the default that I have for analytics here is pretty much identical to the regular analytics page, except I labeled it default analytics and gave it a different colored background. You would essentially want it to be the same as your page so it could fall back and essentially still render that same data that you expected to see. So now that I've made this fix, if we go back, and we can go back to the dashboard, we can click settings after the team loads. We've got team settings. Analytics is here. Now I do the hard refresh, hard navigation. We've got default analytics and team settings like we expect. I hope all of this makes sense to you as I've gone through the simple example quickly, but I think it's fairly straightforward. You can render pages that you expect to get data from at different rates. One may come in faster than the other, and you can have separate loading and error states for both. You can also have separate routes, uh, essentially trees configured, like we have team settings, but analytics does not have a settings directory, but you need those defaults to fall back on. And of course, remember, each slot that you create for these parallel routes needs to be rendered in the layout. Quickly jumping to the Next.js blog, I'm looking at the release notes for version 14.2, and I hadn't covered parallel or intercepting routes up until this point because only at version 14.2 and above, parallel and intercepting routes now that invoke server actions with revalidate path or revalidate tag, revalidate the cache and refresh the visible slots while maintaining the user's current view. Before this caused an error. And the same with router refresh that you would call on the client. This all works now. And so I think, in my mind, parallel routes and intercepted routes, which I plan to cover soon, are now definitely worth using and won't cause unexpected errors in your Next.js application. And speaking of intercepted routes, another great use case for parallel routes in Next.js is to combine them with intercepted routes and create modals. And that's what I plan to cover in my next video. Do you have an interesting use case for parallel routes in Next.js? Let me know in the comments. Hey guys, giving a quick shout out to my patrons. Holy Coder is a progress provider and Eldad is a member at the senior level. Also, thank you to all of the junior members. You're all helping me reach my goals. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it's got exclusive content and early release content. And it's not one of those Patreons that doesn't get many posts. I'm active on there every week, so please check it out if you haven't. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.